If you would like to earn CPE credit for listening to the show, visit earmarkcpe.com backslash FPA. Download the app, take a short quiz, and get your CPE certificate. If you would like to earn continuing education credit for your FP&A certification from the Association of Finance Professionals for listening to the show, go to the show notes for details on how to earn the credit. Finally, if you enjoy listening to FP&A today, please go to your podcast platform of choice, click the subscribe button, and leave a rating and review of the show. And now, on to the show. From Data Rails, this is FP&A Today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to FP&A Today. I am your host, Paul Barnhurst, aka the FP&A Guy. FP&A Today is brought to you by Data Rails, the financial planning and analysis platform for Excel users. Every week, we welcome a leader from the world of financial planning and analysis. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by two people. I have AJ Patel and Andrew Grigolovich with me, and I'm really excited to have both of them. A little bit about AJ. AJ comes to us from Philadelphia. If you follow him on LinkedIn, you'll know him as the Excel Ninja. He has his newsletter called the Excel Dojo. His background is mechanical engineering. Prior to starting his own business, he worked as a business planning and process analyst. So that's a little bit about AJ. And then Andrew comes to us from Latvia. He is the founder and CFO of Financial Modeling World Cup, CFOTemplates.com, and AG Capital. So something tells me he keeps himself plenty busy. He's also a chartered financial analyst from the CFA Institute, and he recently earned the prestigious Master Financial Modeler from the Financial Modeling Institute. So, AJ, Andrew, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having us, Paul. Thank you so much. All right. Well, why don't we start with just giving you each an opportunity to tell us a little bit about yourself, get a little bit more of your background and how you ended up doing what you're doing today. So we'll start with you, Andrew. Well, uh, it, it's been a very interesting background. So uh, actually, I've been doing finance uh, for my for the whole of my professional life. Uh, actually, I graduated a very good, uh, very good business school, so Stockholm School of Economics in Riga, and uh, that was the greatest time uh, in the uh, history of our country when we just uh, recently regained independence and uh, people like me who had like very good Western education could get very, very good uh, career perspectives because most of the people were not really uh, able to move businesses forward. And at the age of 21, I became a CFO right from the, <laughs> from the university that like uh, of a, uh, of a quite a big retail company. It was one of the biggest uh, in our local country, in our small country, but still it had like 250, uh, 250 employees, 70 locations. Uh, it was a cell phone retailer, you know, the booming industry by that time. And uh, so that was the time when I got into Excel modeling, into budgeting, uh, financial planning, uh, worked uh, in that business, in the, then in the other business of the same owners, for almost 10 years and then founded my own consulting, AG Capital, back in 2010. And then in 2020, that was the time that, uh, that was the, t- the time to, f- to start the Financial Modeling World Cup. Uh, I live in Riga, Latvia. That's a small country in the north of the European Union. And, but, but I work with uh, clients from all, all over the world, uh, mostly from the United States, uh, but also from uh, EU, Australia, UK, and other countries. Great. Thank you for that introduction, Andrew. I appreciate it. And like I said, glad you could be here with us. AJ, do you want to give us a little bit of your background and how you ended up doing what you're doing today? Sure. So uh, first, thank you, Paul, so much for uh, for having me and, and Andrew on this uh, podcast. Andrew, it's great to meet with you. I'm looking forward to the conversation so my background is I'm a, I'm an engineer, right? So here we are talking about the Financial Modeling World Cup, and I'm an engineer. So that what kind of sense does that make? So if, you've, if you know any, any engineers, we actually very much love Excel as well. As much as the uh, FP&A guys, accounting world, uh, we, are, we are huge into it. Um, we love messing around with it. So it's for me, you know, starting out in Excel in college, really kind of learning a really solid foundation then entering the uh, the workforce as an engineer. And along the way, what happened was I met a gentleman by the name of Bill Gerstadt, who at the time was old enough to be my father. 
And uh, I've been using my, at the time, what I realize now, primitive Excel skills to do some project management work. And uh, one day I came up to my cubicle and was asking me what was taking so long to get something done. I'm thinking to myself, there's no way you're, you're getting any of your work done faster than me. I, I'm using Excel. And he said, come over here, young Padawan. And he, and he showed me his uh, completely automated uh, Excel spreadsheet complete with VBA. And uh, so he took me under his wing and, and taught me so much. And, and it helped me so much in my career because as I progressed from that small manufacturing company into the oil and gas and energy industry, where, as you mentioned before, I ended up in optimization, planning, and analysis, uh, I was able to take all of those lessons learned over the years and help me continue to stand apart from the crowd. And I was always known as the Excel guy under those circumstances. And you know, when I left the corporate world and I wanted to do something, I thought, you know what, I want to, I want to help everybody that I can, just like Bill helped me. And I want to teach Excel to as many people as possible because it gave me the opportunity to stand apart. It gave me the opportunity to, to, to grow in my career and bring something, you know, a new perspective to the way we did things. And now I have the, I have this knowledge and I just want to share it with as many people as possible so they can do the same thing and I can help people upskill so they can have better opportunities in life as well. Thank you. I appreciate that, AJ. And you know, that's a great background both of you have. Appreciate you telling the story. What we're going to do is we like to start by just getting to know our guests a little better. So I have this uh, section. It's kind of not rapid fire, but you get 30 seconds. So limited, you know, quick answers where we just ask you four questions about yourself. And since I have two guests, it's the first time I got to do this one with two guests. We're going to go through all four questions with you, AJ, and then we'll do all four with you, Andrew. So I'm going to run through these and the idea is to be, you know, relatively quick. So okay. what is something interesting about you? Not many people know, AJ. Okay. This is a great question. So um, I am the Excel Ninja and my newsletter is the Excel Dojo. And the reason I chose that moniker is I actually studied martial arts for over 25 years of my life. I'm a fifth degree black belt in Tung Soo Do. And uh, so the idea of becoming a teacher to teach others is actually very natural to me. So uh, many people have asked me and questioned whether I could use the moniker Excel Ninja and have the Excel Dojo. And I find it very, very relevant uh, to my life because studying martial arts has actually been uh, a mainstay of it. So great. Thank you. Appreciate that one. So the next one, if you could meet one person in the world, dead or alive, who would you meet and why? <laughs> this is a great question. And being a mechanical engineer, uh, we, we find, I find myself always saying, uh, this one, one goofy thing. So whenever I get in a plane, I always get nervous and I always start thinking, come on, Mr. Newton, come on, Mr. Newton. Cause we all know that the father <laughs> of, of modern science, uh, because he created the, uh, ca the system of calculus is Sir Isaac Newton. So the things he came up with, the things he developed, I'm a mechanical engineer, obviously Newtonian mechanics, uh, Sir Isaac Newton would be it. And a close second place would be Benjamin Franklin. Got it. Thanks. Lo love those answers. So next one, what is the last thing you Googled, looked up on YouTube or searched using generative AI that had to do with either finance, fp &A, or Excel? Oh, geez. So the <laughs> last thing that I, so it would, it would be Excel. And, um, <sighs> This is embarrassing because I can't really remember the last thing that I Googled. I guess if I went into my chat GPT history, I would know. But, you know, I did put out a newsletter. Oh, you know what it was? I put out a newsletter last week. And oftentimes I will use chat GPT to maybe verify things. So one of the things I love to do within my newsletters and any content I create is when I put out a formula such as the filter formula that's coming out in a couple of weeks, I like to make sure that I have the syntax Correct, but also the explanations of each of the iterative syntax. So the last thing I actually did in ChatGPT was I said, "Hey, Chat, give me the exact syntax and the um, the explanation for each part of the syntax for the filter formula," which is that a great a array. <laughs> that that one works. So the last question here: What's your favorite Excel function or feature? Favorite thing about Excel? Oh God! Well, my favorite thing about Excel, to be honest with you, uh, really has been VBA. Um, only, and, and in this case, the reason why is, is because with VBA, it meant so much, uh, to pushing me forward in my career. Uh, that said these new data arrays, the, the spill arrays, 
they're starting to take over because they're so neat <laughs> and you can do so many cool things with them, especially when you start nesting them within each other. They are, they are pretty amazing for sure. So now we're going to run through those same questions with you, Andrew. So the first one is something interesting about you not many people know. Uh, well, probably the fact that I got uh, appointed as CFO of a, uh, of a company at, at, the age of, at, at the age of 21. I can't imagine. That had to be pretty overwhelming. Hats off to you. I know I couldn't have done that at 21. So that, that's amazing. We have to dig into that one a little later. So next one, if you could meet any one person, dead or alive, who would you meet and why? Yeah, th that's an interesting question. <clears throat> Actually, I was thinking through that uh, for my current work. I'm kind of seem to be qu quite okay with uh, the surroundings that I have. But out of curiosity, it would be interesting for me to meet, uh, I think it was Emperor Trajanus who was uh, leading the Roman Empire back in uh, around the year 113, 115 of uh, uh AD, where, which was the time when the Roman Empire was the, uh, you know, got was was at its uh, at its peak, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it would be interesting to see. Like from that, it was only downhill, and it would be interesting to see what was the vision of the person by that time. Like, did did he foresee it's going to be getting worse, or uh, did they only continue to build, you know, the hockey sticks? Like we're going to expand, 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 and how how did that work? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I laughed that you said the hockey sticks. We've all seen that if we've done any kind of planning. Oh, yeah. So that's, a, that's a good one. You know what it is like. 13 different spreadsheets emailed out to 23 different budget holders. Multiple iterations, version control, errors, back and forth updates. You never really feel in control of the consolidation and collection process. Yep, I've been there. Stop, breathe. DataRails is the financial planning and analysis platform for Excel users. DataRails takes data from all your company's disparate sources. No organization is too complex, consolidating everything into one place, secured in the cloud. Now all your data finally talking to each other. Everything is automated back into your report in Excel. Cash flow, FX conversion, intercompany transactions, now automated and up to date. Drill down and variance analysis in seconds. Don't replace Excel, embrace Excel. Turn your Excel into a lean, mean FPNA machine. Find out more at www.datarails.com. So next one, what's the last thing you Googled, looked up on YouTube or used, you know, generative AI related to finance, <laughs> FP&A or Excel? Okay, that was a, that was a funny, uh, well, a bit of uh, background. I'm very good at formulas, uh, at writing formulas in Excel. I didn't do VBA uh, or tried to avoid it until a project a couple of years ago when I had to, uh, basically, it was getting so complicated that uh, there was only, the only way for me to, to, to complete that was uh, starting to run, to do it through VBA. And uh, I Googled VBA, like uh, lots of the other things, uh, wrote, wrote the model for the clients, and uh, they didn't understand that I was learning by doing, actually. They uh, referred to me as a, you know, guru of VBA <laughs> at that point. Uh, that's funny. Well, thank you for sharing that one. And then last one here, what's your favorite Excel kind of function or feature? Uh, data tables. The fact that you can run various scenarios, uh, you know, for the Financial Modeling World Cup, especially for the Ex Microsoft Excel World Championships, that's the must have that you need to know. Like you solve one question and then you run it through the whole level. That's one I need to use more often. I've never been a huge, I understand it and I've used it some, but I've never used it a lot. I need to brush up on it. It's been a while. I see AJ smiling there. He's thinking about data tables. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> realizing how many of my problems it would help me with inside of the uh, my FMWC challenge. Now I'm like, wait a minute. That was the answer, data tables. <laughs> Yes. Well, we'll get we'll get to that one here in a minute about that experience. But Andrew, can you I just can you tell us the story, the backstory of how the Financial Modeling World Cup came about, how you end up founding that? Yeah. So 
uh, it's a it's a long it's an eight year long story because uh, this is basically a successor the financial modeling world cup it's it's a successor of a different competition that was named model of mm-hmm. uh, it was founded by yep. two guys from australia back in 2012 and i was a, a keen player there so i uh, it was it was an annual thing so only once a year you could compete and i was uh, playing there every year so really waiting for the for the competition and made it to the finals twice uh, every year they uh, they, they had like 16 finalists, so made it in 2016 to London and 2017 to New York finals. Uh, but then uh, the guys, you know, they developed this business, a couple of other businesses, and uh, they just sold this one to new owners. And uh, this kind of, uh, you know, stopped. And then the COVID came and it uh, really s- looked that nothing is going to continue there. So what happened is that I was really waiting for, well, on one hand, I was waiting for, for the current, uh, well, for the tournament of 2020. And like for half a year, there were like not a single update on the, uh, on the social media of that, uh, of that competition. And additionally, I also knew that, uh, you know, there are ways to improve that. So instead of annual thing, I was, I would love to have a monthly competition. I would like to have some, you know, more transparent rankings uh, because previously they uh, didn't only announce the winners, not not the whole the whole squad. Uh, I wanted to have, uh, let's say, solution files, not just the problem files, uh, and so on and so on. So there was really lots of different ideas that uh, I have, you know, gathered uh, through these years, and I kind of wanted to to have it there. And at one point, I just, you know, so okay, like. Maybe that's the time to do something myself. Uh, and uh, maybe this is the time that uh, our team at AG Capital could start doing that. And uh, this is basically when um, several of us came together and uh, launched this uh, FMWC. Appreciate that backstory. And I'm glad you did. You know, it seems like it's growing and going well. And that's a great thing. I know we see it on Excel now. And I know next week. August 4th, and that will probably be when this is released, it will have already happened, but the Excel Esports is going on and you know, they're having an elimination style competition. So that's exciting. It will be fun. I've seen a lot of the posts on LinkedIn from different people about that. Yeah, it's going to be really an exciting one. That one, I bet, will be really exciting. That's the first time you've done that format, right? Where you've done an elimination style like that every five minutes? That's going to be a premiere. So that's going to be, we're going to be revealing this thing. And uh, honestly, I can tell you, because I, I, like we have already filmed, so it's going to be like post-produced, but uh, it's such a great format. Every five minutes, there is really people you know, fighting, uh, especially those who are, you know, fighting for the next to the last position. They're getting to to get their answers, trying to guess at least something. So they're really, every five minutes, there is uh, an, ex- like, in addition to all the action that's happening there, there is some extra action and you have some, you know, people being eliminated, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> the Hunger Games style, <laughs> so to say. Well, maybe not that cruel, but still. And uh, it's, it's, it's really fun. It's interesting. You, you really, you could have a brilliant, uh, analyst or brilliant uh, Excel mind who's going for a, uh, let's say multi-level solution, like a universal solution that solves all the five levels, uh, simultaneously. But that person will have zero points after five minutes and will be eliminated. So we won't be able to solve everything. So, and there are lots of different tactical things, tactical solutions, uh, tactical choices. Like, do I go for a bonus? Do I go for a level? Do I go for maybe some harder level or, or less hard level? So really lots of, you're going to love that format. Yeah, it, it sounds like it will be a, a great event. So it's exciting to see that. And just speaking to the competition in general, one more question around that. You know, I've heard you mention and talk about, you see it on the website, that it's first and foremost a learning opportunity. It is. Why is that? And what do you hope people gain from it? Uh, well, my, my, like our, our slogan since the very beginning was uh, learn, train, compete. And uh, basically the competition, that's just the final part. That's when you are a uh, guru or a master, when you you know, really know all the ins and outs uh, in Excel. And I bet nobody knows all of them, right? So you 
<laughs> you might start competing. You you might start to you know uh, get some. Uh, top spots and so on. But for most of the people, that's a great way to learn because they have two things. First of all, it's fun. You basically uh, have a challenge that's uh, at a specific time. You're getting uh, specific points. You kind of see how you're doing. And on the other hand, you can also compare yourself how you're doing against the crowd. Uh, One time that might be humiliating, but if you work a little bit more, like several stages, you will see that uh, initially you were ranked maybe like within the uh, bottom half, then you're improving somewhat, then you're improving even better. And at one point you're starting to get into the top uh, 50 or top 20 or maybe top 10 players, right? So you can see, you can track your performance, you can track your progress in a fun way. So, and the challenges that we post basically uh like we really do lots of useful challenges that will grow your excel skills your financial modeling skills uh on other platforms that are you know purely training platforms you will get uh something similar maybe maybe a a little bit more boring and for a uh you know, for a big, big price, t- for a big ticket, right? For a high price. Here, like uh, $25 per stage, and you get three cases to solve. You train yourself in various ways. This is really uh, a fun uh, and effective way to train. That That's how we treat that. Thank you, Andrew. I, I appreciate that. And I do, I will agree it's a fun way having just done it. And we'll get into that here in a few minutes. Got a couple questions for you, AJ. The first is, You worked as a business planning analyst for a good part of your career before starting your own business. What is that? And from your perspective, how is that different from a financial planning analyst? What's the difference? That's a a good question. So in my role in business planning and optimization analyst, so I was in the oil industry. And so the thing about oil industry, there's a lot of velocity in terms of spend. So my Mm -hmm. refinery, uh, we spent you know, anywhere between 70 and a hundred million dollars every three days. And in order to spend that money, you get, you purchase a barrel of oil. And if you're off by a dollar and where you think you should have bought it, it can mean losing millions or making millions, right? So it's very sensitive. And so while as, you know, typical financial planning is a little bit more long-term, these, this particular role was literally like the next three, four days, the next three, four days, the next three, four days, the next three, four days. And then my view was generally about 90 to 180 days because when I bought a barrel of crude oil, it could take about 90 days to get to my refinery, anywhere between 30 and 90 days. And so I had to, I had to play this medium outlook along with like the immediate needs of the refinery. And the complexity is huge, right? So you're, when you talk about oil, I don't want to get too into it, but essentially, you know, any barrel of oil has thousands of properties and you have to match them against thousands of properties within your refining operation, you have to figure out exactly what combination of all of it will actually uh, result in, in profitability uh, for the company. And, and just because you pay less for oil doesn't mean you make more money. You could pay less for oil and lose millions. And you could pay more for oil and end up making money. So that's the, the fundamental difference is, is the velocity at which we had to do the analysis. We were constant um, 24 seven, there were days where I'd be sitting on the beach and I'd get a phone call. Hey, something changed. We need an analysis done. And I had viewed the report that morning. I grabbed the stick and I'm doing math in the sand and I'm making phone calls. So <laughs> I didn't always have my Excel spreadsheets everywhere I went, but you learn to make do. Got it. So it sounds like for you, there was that velocity and it was very focused on one area in the sense yeah. of the oil. I get, there were lots of variables around that. There's yeah. a lot of complexity, but it was focused where often, you know, fp a you're looking at the whole business and you're taking much more of that long-term view. But I'm sure there's a lot of similarities. Planning is planning at the end of the day. Right, right. Okay, that, that makes sense. So next question, you had the opportunity this week, as did I, to compete in FMWC. You did your first case ever. Mm-hmm. Tell us about it. What was it like? So it's, it's interesting. Um, you know, going into it, I, I just had no idea what to expect. You just don't know what to expect. And I was I was like, well, if I can just not get a zero, that's my goal. <laughs> right? If I can successfully answer anything in here, I would <laughs> I would like it. And and Andrew, I have to tell you, you you said earlier 
that this was about learning and having fun. And the, the cases that I got, you can actually really sink your teeth into them and have fun with it. And I think that aspect of it actually made me feel comfortable. And I didn't think like I was just going to get handed these overly complex questions that were going to result in me being like, I can't do this. <laughs> in fact, the, the, the way that the questions were presented, it was like, you know, basic knowledge. And then you kind of build out and build out and build out. And you're able to start working towards more complex solutions. Now, I started realizing that maybe a little too late in the game. I spent a little bit more too much time on some stuff. But overall, I have to tell you, it was a good experience. I do plan on going back into the files. I do plan on trying to see how I could do things better because ultimately, it was an opportunity to practice and learn. And, and I, I thought it was like, I actually really enjoyed the experience. I, I just have to say it was a positive for me. And I want to do it again. And I want to try. I want to see how far I can actually go thinking from the mindset of it, like, like being a competitor, it, you know, when I do an Excel spreadsheet, I can take my time. I can sit back, relax. <laughs> this is no sit back and relax. You got to go. Uh, but it's nonetheless, it was, it was fun. It was fun. That's I, so I, glad I love that hear. answer. I'm glad you really enjoyed it. Yes. Sorry, Paul. I just wanted to, to react here. I, I'm so glad to hear, to hear AJ's opinion here. Uh, it's it, it it it's so good because we're really working so that you guys have uh, this opportunity and this the, the, these types of emotions that you can learn, you can uh, improve skills, you can uh, feel good, and you you can get some fun out of uh, seemingly boring uh, thing because it's it's really lots of lots of fun there. <laughs> good, I like that. I'll share a little bit of my experience because I got to do two this last week. It was my first time, so I did the you know financial modeling World Cup with you, the finance case. And just to set the stage a little bit, how it worked is we had three different cases. There's kind of a warm up where you're doing some questions around interest and very basic. And then a more complex model where you have like 17 different questions that you're you know, progressively trying to solve more and more about it. And then you had a third one that was a little more challenging. And so there's basics, some modeling stuff you need to think about, you know, what formula you're going to use. And the, the longer you get into it, the more challenging it is. And so it was definitely, I found it was a good experience, but similar to you, AJ, I found myself, there's times where something would just drive me crazy. And so I'd format it and I'm like, why am I wasting time formatting this? This is a competition. Like this is going to take you 10 <laughs> seconds, but it was just bothering me because I'm so used to, I can do that whenever I want, when I'm taking my time on something and it's not a, you know, I'm not in a rush. And so little things like that of just realizing how different the environment is, you know, for a case versus, you know, general work that I'm doing. and so. Like you, it was a good experience. And then, you know, do, doing the Excel esports was just a whole different one, especially being, you know, streamed live. And you know, I got I got the bonus question and it went downhill from there. It was kind of how it worked for me. My brain just kind of froze up. And right as I finished the case, there was one section, you'll kind of laugh. I was looking at it and thinking about it. And I realized, I'm like, I did that all wrong. Why did I even think those were the, like, I misunderstood it in my head, the case. And so I answered them wrong. And then I came back later and looked at it and go, why did I think that? You know how you do sometimes? And I think it was just the pressure of not being in that type of environment, but it was fun. I learned a lot and, you know, it was, I'm excited to go back and kind of dig through the cases, like you said. So, you know, hats off to you, Andrew, on that. I know you created the case for this round. So maybe talk to us a little bit about the case and what that's like creating one and your thinking that goes into that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, as for case creation, it's uh, it's important that uh, like the main challenge here is not to overcomplicate it, and at the same time to make it interesting enough for for the uh, strongest players. So this one actually turned out to be perfect in a way that there was one person who made a maximum. So that was Andrew and Guy, the current world champion. Uh, he scored uh, all the five levels and all the bonus points within. Uh, Actually, he just saved like four minutes or something. Um, and the third place at the same time, which is like, you know, only uh, like, so, so, so like the first place was uh, the maximum of 1,250 points. The third place was scoring 700 something. So basically that was a 500 point uh, drop. So still it was uh, okay for the, for the top players and was challenging enough for most of the people. And those uh, probably the uh, the 
average results there were probably a, a little bit around 500 points, maybe maybe the last 400 or something. So, uh, and the case itself, that was about the table football, but not the football that, you know, like with all these, uh, uh, you know, uh, players moving around, but rather the retro type uh, that I had actually in my, in my childhood, uh, with the players being, uh, let's say, stick to the specific places on the on the board and uh, and, the, uh, and having the ball roll towards them. And when I was like, uh, I think uh, somebody uh, gifted it to me when I was like six or seven or eight, and I was a fan of football. So basically, what I did, I, I was just really playing the uh, the whole uh, national championship between sixteen teams uh, back there. And imagine the number of matches, like every team had to play like 15 games one leg and 15 games another leg so uh towards the end i was playing like okay one nil this time this come this team wins uh, then okay one nil the other team wins uh, it's it was so boring but i really wanted to finish this championship now with excel i could have modeled like how they played actually and just play only some some of these matches so um, and that was something that like how can you model uh playing playing so- something that's interesting to to play something that uh, could be interesting to, to watch on the screen. We're really trying to make these cases uh, look good on the screen, so they should be visually attractive. Uh, card games, uh, roulettes, uh, you know, biathlon, those types of things, they really look good on the screen. And this is something that we really want to bring, not just some numbers, but well-formatted uh, things like football field drawn in Excel with all the fans outside. That look you know, better than just numbers uh, with no formatting, right? So uh, this this is something that uh, the, these are the ideas that come come come. That kind of we need to balance uh, through uh, creating these cases, and of course, uh, it's 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 not only me. Basically, it's uh, lots of other people who do cases. Uh, we actually have very responsive players, so there are people who submit their cases uh, this year. So that was. Um, Road to Las Vegas, seventh stop number seven. Uh, that was the first time my case was played this year. Before that, there were people uh, like uh, Peter Charles, Harry Siders, uh, Patrick Chetang, who have submitted their cases, and we uh, were, you know, thanks to them, we have, you know, had very good uh, excitement there in the previous rounds. Uh, yeah, so uh, thank you. No, I appreciate that background, and just so everybody knows, is listening. There's the this was the Excel esports case that I had the opportunity to be streamed live. The one that AJ and I did Monday was the financial modeling World Cup. So there's you know they're different cases and the esports one, like you said, was a soccer one where you had to figure out positions and pull things apart to come up with okay if this happens where does the ball go? If that happens where does the ball go? And you're trying to automate those formulas and each step it's getting harder and harder. And so it was, it was visually appealing. You could see the stadium, you could see the soccer field, you could see the people and a lot of different ways to approach the case. So it was uh, definitely, for me, it's much more of a logic game is kind of how I think about it with the esports versus kind of FMWC, which has its logic, but it's a little more of that kind of modeling and it just builds on each other and is challenging the way you have to think and solve things, which they both do, but just different different approaches to each other. Actually, I was surprised that AJ, with his engineering background, selected to go for the Financial Modeling World Cup because for us, we actually positioned Excel Esports as something uh, that's the kind of less finance-related. So basically, for Excel Esports, we tried to make it open to engineers, mathematicians, uh, statisticians, whoever work, works in Excel, whoever is strong in Excel and who doesn't, want, who doesn't need to have the you know, specific financial knowledge. So maybe you try that next time. He can thank he can thank me for that being an FPNA today <laughs> podcast. Said, hey, let's sign up for this. And we both signed up for that one. So AJ, <laughs> next time we'll have you try the esports. Yeah, my I have to tell you, listening to you talk about the esports, I'm kind of like I feel like that might have been really a lot of fun uh, to give that a shot. So Andrew, don't worry, that's now on my radar. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll show you, I picked up some of their cases so you and I can chat and I can show you what some of those look like so you can kind of see what it's like. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, I I just wanted to mention that's uh, another 
specifics of the uh, Excel esports is that we want to make this uh, spectator friendly sport. So we stream that, we cheer the players, we praise the top uh, skills, the top, the top uh, players, but also all the players who, who, who take part, right? So, and the best part of that is that the finals of the Microsoft Excel World Championship will be in Las Vegas in an esports arena. So it's going to be a huge event this uh, later this year. So, and that's in addition to nice. being on ESPN. <laughs> no, I, I'm really excited. I know Andrew and I have been chatting, and I'm going to go down to Vegas. We're going to do an episode where we interview the uh, finalists, and I'm hoping. I think it's going to work to go the weekend before and do the college championship and interview the finalists there in Tucson. So I'm looking forward to learning a few new things as I watch these people work and realize how much I can improve my Excel game. <laughs> right? I mean, that's one of the things I've definitely learned. So I think I know the answer to this question, AJ, but we're going to ask it anyway. Moment of truth. You going to compete again? Yeah. Yeah. I think I think that's definitely on the uh, on the agenda. Like I said, not just... FMWC. I think that was one thing, but now this Excel eSport vertical sounds like it's a lot of fun. And I, I've been seeing videos and, you know, Oz is out there with the great hair and he's talking <laughs> about the road to Las Vegas. And now I, I kind of see that there was two different things and I'm, I'm kind of all about it. And, and the competitive juices are going from those, all those years I spent studying martial arts. Now <laughs> I might be pouring <laughs> that energy into this. Uh, but that will require me to start doing a little bit of practice and training. And Paul, you offered it up. Let's do it. Next question is, what would you say to someone who's thinking of competing? Just jump in, jump in, just do it right. If you're, if you're on the, if you're kind of on the proverbial fence, there's no reason to be on the fence. Uh, just, just do it because you've got nothing to lose. It's, you know, as Andrew mentioned, they make it completely accessible in terms of affordability. Jump in. You know, I went in with these crazy expectations of impossibility and I walked out with, wait a minute, I, I guess I know some stuff and uh, it, I, I feel better because of it. And I just think if you're on the fence, do it. The answer is yes. I love that. I like what, um, so we had uh, Dermy and Early was our podcast we released last week. And he made a comment that really stuck out to me. He said, I asked him a question of what winning the world championship has done for him. And he said, I, I've been more rewarded by becoming better at Excel than becoming better known. Like what's benefited me more? And he said, learning Excel better has helped me more in my career than being better known. And I thought that was really interesting, which speaks to the learning opportunity. Right. Because everybody dreams of in certain areas wanting to win. But I like how he said, you know, really, I learn more from upping my Excel game and it benefits me more in my career than, hey, having world championship on my resume. And I thought that was really interesting. I mean, that makes sense when you think about how life is. It's always about learning, right? And the only way that you're going to up your game, I mean, Paul, let's be honest. The reason why we jumped into this was because your post was about, Hey, I think I'm going to do this. This is a great way to go about learning. And that, and then you, you kind of got me into it because I said, yeah, this is the best way to learn is sometimes sign mm -hmm. up for a competition. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, I need to perform <laughs> and it gets you into, into a place where it's like, all right, let me go down the things and learn about the things I really was resistant to because it wasn't relevant to me. And now you're making it relevant. So I think there's a lot of wisdom in that statement. That, yeah, that, that was mentioned that it's, it's learning more and in, in that growth part of it. Yeah. I can assure you of this, and I'm a big football fan. You look at any pro football player that's successful, it's because all they do is continuously learn. You don't stop learning. The guys who stop learning, they're the ones that ultimately drop out. So to always be learning, having competitions like this. Actually, Andrew, honestly, this competition is doing a service to, to, to people in the Excel world and data in general. Because what you're doing is, is you're upping its game every time and it, you're finding new ways to do things and new ways for people to think about things. It's not just about the competition. You are doing a, this is, there's actually a broader uh, uh, aspect to this, which is actually seeing people all up their game, you know, and now seeing an evolution in that, in this vertical. Yeah, the word competition here uh, might be misleading to some people who are maybe not very willing to compete, but rather to learn. I think like, it, it it belongs there because this is what what uh, what what is there for the for the top guns. But the industry 
most of the players, most of the participants, anyone who signs up gets the training part, gets the learning thing and up, upgrades his or her uh, skill and, and the level of Excel game. So what advice do you give to people when they ask you about, they say, hey, I'm thinking of competing, Andrew. What do you typically tell them? Mm, jump in. <laughs> Good advice. I like that. Yeah. Honestly, we, we, we just say them that uh, it's, it's really, as AJ formulated it perfectly. There is nothing to lose. You only gain training. You only gain skill. And worst case, even if you get zero points, you can always opt in for like uh, showing your ID number instead of your name. You won't. Nobody's even going to know that you are getting better. I wish I, I should have did that, that when they streamed. <laughs> should have done that. <laughs> no. Done that. Oh well. <laughs> no, I, I knew you could, but I was like. Eh. People can see my score. I have no problem with it. But there was one thing I was going to say that you mentioned there. I like what you gave about the learning. And uh, I, I'm going to go back to an interview on Financial Modelers Corner. So it's other a different podcast. But when I talked to Dermian, he made the comment that I really liked. He said that so many people come to me and say, I'm going to try it, but I need to train first. He goes, well, and what other thing do you train first? He goes, you're going to learn by doing it. And so he's like, just jump in and do it and you'll get better. That's your training is doing it. Don't think you have to master everything, which you never will. And then you'll compete. Like just jump in and start learning and have fun. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like you look at little kids, you watch three-year-olds on the soccer field, right? It's just a, it's a comedy of errors and they don't know what they're doing, but they're just out there learning and having fun. And then they figure it out. And the first time you do it for a competition in Excel for the vast majority of us, it's probably not going to go very well. You know, and over time, you get better. Just how it works. You, you know what's interesting, Paul, is is it's almost like when when folks say, I have to prepare, I have to do this, I can't because I have to. It there, It's an internal excuse, right? <laughs> like, like, I even think I pushed back on you and I was like, listen, I'm going to be in Florida the week before this. I don't know. And you're like, just do it. And I'm like, all right, I'm doing it. That's it. I'm, I'm making excuses. <laughs> Well, I heard myself making the excuse. So yeah, you just jump in and do it. And whatever happens, it's like, it's not going to be the end of the world. You're going to get experience. And then the next time, maybe you could say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to prepare, but you know what to expect. Don't, don't stop yourself before it starts. Go. Yep. Right. That's the speed of the world is go. It's the speed of life. It's the speed of everything is go. So you got to go. It's how you learn. I mean, the only way we learn and improve ourselves is by challenging ourselves. And there's plenty of different ways to do it. You know, you don't have to compete in this. You can be great in Excel and FP&A and have never done it. But if you enjoy the enjoy that type of thing, you want to challenge yourself. It's a great it's a great way to do it. I mean, I like I said, I'll definitely do it again. So we're coming up near the end of our time. I think this has been a fun conversation. I get to talk Excel, which is always fun. I get to be a nerd, so I like that. You know, and so last two questions, and we'll uh, do this first. We'll ask you, Andrew, this question, and then we'll ask you, AJ. So if you could give one piece of advice to help people become better in Excel, what would be your advice, Andrew? In addition to what we were just talking about <laughs> for the whole, whole last... <laughs> I figured that was going to be one of them. Yes, in addition. In addition, uh, watch uh, the videos. Uh, try to look how the best players or how the best specialists uh, work. Tr you will probably notice some uh, patterns. You will notice how they treat things. Uh, and that's a good way to, to learn, to spot other ways to solve problems that you probably might not be even thinking that these could exist. So watch how the pros work. I've learned a ton from watching. I used to, and I probably shouldn't admit this, it'll show how much of a nerd I am. But when I was exercising, I used to watch... Uh, Excel is fun, Mike Gervin videos. And I remember one day watching one and I'm like, oh, that's a solution I need at work. And it saved me hours from a process we had. And I was like, I'm watching the video at work and putting it in place. I'm like, I'm sure glad I did that. And so I totally agree. You can learn a lot from others. AJ, what's your advice on that one to get better at Excel? You know, I think uh, you, you took the words right out of my mouth and you brought Mike Irvin and Excel is fun. And, and I think where you really see it, and this is how the world has changed, right? When we first started back when I was in college, I mean, it was like, you had to get a book, you had to go here, you had to find the things, right? And and nowadays, and I actually have a post coming up about this, is is what you can actually do is you could go on the on 
on social media, you can find folks who are consistently posting, uh, you know, different things that you could do inside mm -hmm. of Excel. And you can learn things one day at a time. And I think by breaking it down to that and getting to the most simple, basic things, if you're a novice with Excel, the first time I ever opened up Excel, it was just all these cells, a lot of white space, a lot of buttons. I didn't know what they did. I closed it down. I never wanted to look at it again. But now, if you could take away that kind of like that initial fear of what is this, and you could start learning little bits at a time and going down to the most basic elements of it, I think you can really start building a solid foundation. And the best way to do that is, is by following these great creators that are on LinkedIn, TikTok, YouTube, and just learning. I mean, hey, I'll raise my hand, Layla Gargrani. How many times I went to her videos to learn something in my life and now to think that I'm even in a sphere with her is kind of crazy, right? So, you know, this is the new way of the world. Social media can be a great source for education. Excel is a wonderful, wonderful uh, topic to learn. And I think that's that's really where you can gain a lot is, is start simple and you get your simple from those creators. So last question, and we'll start with you here, Andrew. If someone wants to get a hold of you, what would be the best way to do that if they maybe want to reach out or have a question for you? Uh, just drop me a line on uh, LinkedIn or send me an email. Uh, that's that's the best way to, to get in touch. Perfect. And AJ, how about yourself? Yeah, so I, you can find me at LinkedIn. Uh, my, my handle on there is uh, the Excel Ninja. Um, you can also find me... Um, if you go to www.learnexcel.live right now, that takes you straight to my Substack, uh, where you can sign up for the Excel Dojo. There's thousands of people signed up for it, getting those weekly lessons. Uh, check it out. It's free. It comes with sample databases, uh, so that you're actually able to not only read the newsletter, but you can also apply what you've learned. Uh, so that's a great resource and you can follow me on LinkedIn as well. Uh, and, uh, if you know, Paul, just click through Paul and you'll, you'll, you'll find my profile, AJ Patel, the XL Ninja. Thanks, AJ. Thanks, Andrew. I really appreciate you guys joining me today. I've enjoyed the conversation. So it's been a lot of fun. Thanks for being on the show, guys. Appreciate it. Love being here. Thank you so much for doing this, Paul. Andrew, thank you so much for creating these wonderful, uh, competitions where we get to learn and grow with Excel. Thank you both guys for joining the last stage of the Financial Modeling World Cup. That was great to having you both jumping in uh, with uh, no preparation and liking that. And uh, thank you. It was great. Uh, it, it was my, my pleasure being here on the uh, on the show today. Thank you so much, Paul. 